Welcome to part one of my painting, Northern Lights, originally by Bob Ross. This is a practice canvas, it's made of paper, painted black with some acrylic, and I've put a couple of matte pins in the side of the canvas, and I used a one inch brush to measure down. This gives me the horizon line, and it's just a little above halfway. I know where to position my mountain, and of course I'm gonna have the Northern Lights in the sky. I'm going to be using two one inch Bob Ross brushes, one of them slightly new, and one of them slightly older. That's used for scrubbing on things like liquid clear. I'm also going to be using a couple of fan brushes. This one I'm going to use for the highlights, and this one with the blue handle is for my dark colours. I've got a filbert, which I don't actually use this time, and a liner brush. And of course, a Bob Ross palette knife. This is a wet and wet oil painting technique, so I'm gonna prep my canvas with this, Bob Ross Liquid Clear Oil Paint. This aids the application of color, and I'm gonna put this over the entire canvas, but very, very thinly. I use it in this little pot, it's easy to get the paintbrush into it. I like to divide my canvas into four, and really scrub this in. Getting on the right amount of Liquid Clear is crucial. Too much, and you'll end up with a very sticky mess. Too little and you'll struggle to spread the paint. When you run your finger over it, it should just be a very thin, thin coat. I finish off my canvas with nice long flat strokes just to even it out. And one last check, there shouldn't be a trail across the canvas. I'm going to use this brush again, so I'm going to dry clean it to get rid of all of that liquid clear that's hiding in the bristles. I have a limited number of colours on my palette. Titanium white, Thalo Blue, Alizarin Crimson, and Thalo Green. The Crimson and the Thalo Blue, well, they get on well. They make a lovely lavender colour, so they get a smile. But not so with the Alizarin Crimson and the Thalo Green. They make a sort of a muddy brown colour, so careful where I put these on the canvas. Using my old dry clean brush, I want to start with some Alizarin Crimson. This is the weakest of the three colours, and the one I want to get on the brush first. The blue and the green, they're quite a bully, so they'll take over quite nicely. And I'm gonna paint it in this corner. Now, you can see there's a sort of a reddish tint to my canvas, but it doesn't always show up. So on camera, it shows fine. In real life, it's almost invisible. And the only way we can test it is to use our fingers. I can use my little finger here, a little sample here and a little touch there and we see the results. The paint on my little finger here, well, too watery. That one, that's about right. And the one at the top, no use at all. So we're looking to get this sort of colour in the area on the right. So let's next add some of the thalo blue colour and we'll let this shake hands with the alizarin crimson. They'll make a nice lavender colour. And finally, thalo green. And I'm going to let that bump into the blue. They quite like each other. I check my canvas before moving on. Let's get a little bit of titanium white on the corner of my fan brush. This is so you can see the horizon line on the tutorial. And here's a little mark for the top of my mountain. Back to the titanium white. And I load my brush heavily. Time for the bravery test. We're going to put the aurora in. And I like to sort of have an idea roughly where it's going to go. And I'm just stippling on the paint. Don't be too gentle with this. You need plenty of paint. If you don't, then your Aurora will look, well, a bit weak. So put on more than you think you need. And as you can see, I'm just daubing it on there. Not brushing it, just dabbing it in place. The auroras have a very distinctive curl to them and I lap them across the canvas and let them branch off occasionally. But don't bunch them up too tightly. You'll see why in a moment. I've got some clean paper towel and my soft one inch brush. And I'm gonna start over here on the far end. And I'm gonna to touch and I'm gonna drag this color up. Watch what happens. This is where the magic begins. I'll try and get my arm out of the way. Press firmly, really push, and drag that white up, and hey presto, we pick up all the blue colour underneath. Give a brush a wipe, and press and go again. 
I'm just going to do this little bottom edge first. I like to keep that little curl in the corner, that little dark bit there. Otherwise they all blur together. Now I can go and do the next curl up. Press and pull. Whoops, a bit offline. Make sure you go straight. I'll get that fixed later. And these two, I'll let them run into each other a bit. Now you can see all those lovely lavender colours we made. This is one of the joys of painting. Creating fabulous colours in the sky. Leaving little bits here and there. We'll come back and fix those later on. This is one of the techniques that I most love about oils. The fact that you can pull and blend colours on the canvas. And it is just like magic for me. I know who it is for you too. This is a tricky little area. Everything's sort of coming from one place. So try and reach in and just grab a little bit of the bottom one and then work your way carefully on the next row up. Again, try not to let everything just run into each other. You want to be able to see some of the individual sort of strands of the aurora or northern lights. And doing this in real time, I don't think I want to time lapse this for you. And as you can see, I start off with lavender on the right, with crimson, then we head into blue, and that gives way to the green. Now, I can reach in and grab that colour just here. You can also see now why I suggested leaving a bit of a gap between each of these bands. If they're too tightly packed, then one colour quickly bumps into the other, and they get too, too overblended. So, there. We've got a little gap here. And we can fix that. I'm going to just come back and dab in a little bit more of the titanium white paint. Just a bit more. And you can sparkle up any part of your aurora or northern lights. There we go. I need to fix these though. They're called sprites. They're like little bits of the aurora that hang down. And I'm just going to use the corner of my brush just to give these a light touch. Tease them down. But again, don't overwork them. Smashing. I'm planning ahead a little bit with this section. I'm going to be putting some trees there. They'll be dark and they won't show up against that sky. So I'm going to add just a hint of some of that dirty white paint just to lighten the area. And I'll add a little bit of light behind the mountain on the other end too. It doesn't need to be very strong, just enough to let the silhouette show up. Here's the area for my mountain. I need to mix up a nice dark base colour for this. I'm going to be using Thalo Blue and Alizarin Crimson. All of my mountains start out usually with a nice dark colour. It's dry and sticky paint and highlights will stick to it very well. So mix it up and then use a little roll of paint on the palette knife and with firm pressure press into the canvas or in this case my practice paper and leave a silhouette of the mountain. Now you can see the advantage of putting that little hint of green on the background. If you enjoy my tutorials and you want to support the channel a little bit more, don't forget you can like, subscribe, leave a comment. If you want to do a bit more, you could even buy me a coffee. There's a link down below and I'll spend the money on more supplies. Thank you. Time to highlight our mountain. It'd be very tempting to use white, but please don't. It's far too bright and overpowering. Instead, I'm going to take a little bit of white and I'm going to start dulling it down. I'm going to use a little bit of the nice lavender color we made and I'm going to add a little bit of blue, maybe a little touch of green, just anything to calm it down a little bit. Test your color regularly. Take a little sample and wow, it's amazing. What looks quite sort of dark on your palette can actually look very bright against your painting. One of the top tips I used to give my students when I taught face-to-face -face classes was always take a sample to your painting. Our eyes aren't very good at moving colour. What we see on the palette doesn't look the same against our painting. This looks way too dark, but let's see it against the painting. It's quite a surprise. So think about a light touch with the palette knife, just lightly in the fingers and 
let the knife bounce down the side of this mountain. Allow the paint to stick where it wants and to break and create this lovely, craggy, rocky looking mountain scene. Don't forget, this is supposed to be night time, so we want our mountain to look eerie, almost spooky. I'll add some little touches of highlight here and there, and I'll leave my shadows the original dark base colour. Don't overwork the mountains too much. It's something you hear me often say, but from experience, usually the first brush stroke or knife stroke is the best. It's the second, third and fourth touch-ups that sometimes undo lovely work. Follow the lay of the land. Think about how a nice glacier would reflect the light of the aurora. So in here, I'll just make a lovely dipping stroke with my palette knife. So here is my basic mountain. But I want to add a little bit more to it. So, ignoring my advice, I've actually mixed up a bright green highlight and I'm going to use just a tiny bit on the end of my knife. I just want to add those little zingers, those tiny little jewels of light to my mountain. So I'm not really overpainting it too much. Add them sparingly. You can't have too many movie stars. They will end up fighting with each other. So a little here and a little there and stand back often to see how your painting's developing. I just want to finish the snow off at the base of the mountain. So I'm using hardly any paint on my knife. It's just the merest touch of color and it really jumps off that canvas. I'll try and get a little bit of that green color, a touch of blue, even a splash of that lovely pink color. Join me for part two of Northern Lights by Bob Ross. I've got a big surprise at the end of it. In the meantime, watch this. Happy painting, people.